Hello and welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrency Explained, in which we break down and interpret different cryptocurrency subjects into plain English. In previous episodes, we covered what blockchain is to a minimal extent, but there is still more to know before we can learn more about other cryptocurrencies and their ecosystems. What precisely is the blockchain technology all about and how does it function? Is it destined to be the next big thing? When a company asks you to invest in their blockchain-based venture, are you missing out on a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? So stay tuned because in this edition of Cryptocurrency Explained, we'll answer these questions and more. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified whenever a new video like this is released. The intriguing world of blockchain technology is the subject of today's discussion. By the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of what blockchain technology is and why it's so difficult to distinguish it from Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Let's take a step back and ask you a question. Before we comprehend how blockchain technology works, we need to know what problems it was meant to answer. In today's environment, how can we know if something is genuine or not? A dollar note, a driver's license, or a vote in the election, for example. How do we know whether it's true or not? What is the solution? It's something we keep track of. Each dollar bill, for example, has a serial number that the bank records. The DMV keeps track of your driver's license number and voting records and used to track who voted and who didn't, ensuring that the same individual does not vote twice. You simply search up a document's legitimacy with the appropriate authorities if you want to be sure it's genuine. We even have notaries who are government licensed witnesses who attest to and record the legitimacy of certain pieces of information or identities. You'll notice that all of these processes have one thing in common. They're all centralized, which means that there's a central authority, whether it's a bank, state agency, or a single person who has the capacity to issue and authenticate the data. When a user joins the blockchain network, he receives a copy of all blockchains since their inception. And the first block in the blockchain is known as the Genesis block. While the public ledger is accessible to everyone, only the user's address and transaction details are visible to users on the Bitcoin network. By looking at the address, you can figure out to whom this address belongs, so the address owner's identity is secure. Even if a hacker tries to hack one block, the hacker would have to change the entire succeeding chain ahead of this block, which would demand a massive amount of computing power for the hacker to make the modifications across all the blocks, which is nearly impossible. So what is blockchain exactly? Blockchain is a distributed database system that is decentralized and secure. It's a distributed ledger that keeps track of and shares transaction details across the network's numerous nodes, ensuring that the data isn't tampered with. Every transaction that takes place on a blockchain network is replicated across all nodes, and each participant has the same copy of the ledger. Now, when a transaction occurs, its related information is recorded into a block. So, a transaction initiated in one corner of the globe can be registered on the block, which is then verified and validated by the public ledger's miners, and then added to the main blockchain. A block contains aggregated transactions in a single block, which a miner must validate, and in exchange, the miner is rewarded. Now, let's take a closer look at a block. Each block comprises prior hash data, which is nothing more than an accumulation of the transactions aggregated in the block, as well as a nuanced value and a hash of the block itself. The previous hash property contains the hash value of its preceding block data, which includes the details of the sender's address, the receiver's address, and the transaction amount, implying that there could be many transactions between different senders and recipients. So each block will contain n number of transactions, each of which will have a sender's address, a receiver's address, and a transaction amount, nuance, used only once. Basically, Bitcoin uses a proof-of-work algorithm, and in order to execute the algorithm, a nonce is a random value used to vary the output of the hash value. We have a chain of blocks or blockchain because each block is linked to the data of the previous block. Many individuals believe that blockchain technology was established by Satoshi Nakamoto, the enigmatic Bitcoin creator. Technically, he not only invented the first real-world application of it, Bitcoin. In truth, Satoshi's original white paper makes no use of the term blockchain. Chain of blocks is the closest he gets to starting blockchain. Now that you know what blockchain technology is, we need to answer two main questions. How does it operate and how will blockchain affect our future? Let's begin with the most basic inquiry. Another way to phrase this question is, how can I develop a system that allows everyone to create, verify, and update records? 
A blockchain, on the other hand, requires four ingredients in order to take on a life of its own. The initial requirement for a blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network, which is a collection of equally privileged computers known as nodes. Anyone and everyone are welcome to attend. This is largely what the internet offers us now. We require this system in order to converse and share data with one another remotely. Cryptography is the second component. The practice of secure communication in a threatening environment is known as cryptography. Even when malicious players are present, it allows me to validate messages and confirm the legitimacy of my own messages. The first element necessitates the usage of cryptography. Remember, I stated everyone, including evil actors, can join this network. It's wonderful that I can communicate, but I also need to ensure that my message is clear. A consensus algorithm is the third component. You can use the word rule for the technical term algorithm. This implies that we must agree on how to add a new page, also known as a block, to our database. There are many other sorts of consensus rules. In the case of Bitcoin, we employ the proof-of-work consensus method. According to this algorithm, in order to gain the right to add a new page to our ledger, someone must solve a math problem that demands computer power to solve. Computers all over the network perform calculations to solve the arithmetic problem consuming a lot of energy in the process. To put it differently, they put up a significant amount of effort. That's why when one of them discovers the solution to the problem and broadcasts it to the network, they're essentially exhibiting a proof of work. Consider it the node's way of saying, hey, I put a lot of effort into addressing this problem first, so I have the right to create the next page. As I previously stated, there are different consensus algorithms that do not require as much energy. This is simply the algorithm type used by the Bitcoin blockchain. Last but not least, there's the issue of punishment and reward. This component comes from game theory and assures that people always follow the rules in their own best interests. We've so far built a network with a secure communication mechanism and a set of rules for reaching a consensus. We'll now tie it all together by rewarding people who help us maintain track of our records and add new pages. This reward is delivered in the form of a token or currency each time a consensus is reached, and a new block is added to our chain. Bad actors who try to deceive or manipulate the system, on the other hand, may either lose the money they spent on computational power or have their coins taken away from them. Furthermore, keep in mind that the system of punishment and reward is founded on psychological behavior. It changes the rules of the system from something you have to follow to something you want to follow because it is in your best interests. This was only a high-level overview of what blockchain is made up of. Check out our video on Bitcoin in this series if you want to learn more about this process. And there you have it, a peer-to-peer -peer network, cryptography, a consensus algorithm, and punishment and reward are the four parts that make up blockchain technology. However, there is a fifth variable that is difficult to quantify, market adoption. I suppose we could have a group of five individuals sharing a ledger with a consensus process, but that doesn't make the system truly decentralized because there aren't enough people involved. Furthermore, without adoption, our coin has no real worth. Thus, the fourth aspect of punishment and reward isn't particularly effective. Only when a blockchain reaches critical mass in terms of users does it become truly decentralized and hence immutable. And it's usually at this stage that the blockchain's coin begins to rise in value. We still have one crucial question to address before we wrap things up in today's video. Is blockchain technology the next big thing? Is blockchain technology going to have a future? The global cryptocurrency market cap topped $3 trillion at the end of 2021, an all-time high. Blockchain technology supports cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. The adoption of blockchain as well as the technology and products that it supports will continue to have significant impact on company operations. So do you believe our world is currently ready for a more comprehensive blockchain implementation than what Bitcoin currently provides? That's it for today's episode of Cryptocurrency Explained. By now, you should have a solid idea of what blockchain technology is. It's a public decentralized mechanism for anybody to manage records that makes them nearly hard to fake. It's a solution to the issues that come with centralization. I also hope that in the future, whenever you hear the term blockchain technology, you'll ask the correct questions. You still might have some reservations or questions, and if that's the case, simply leave them in the comment box below. And don't forget to hit the like button if you're watching this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notified as soon as new episodes are released. Thank you for tuning into this episode, and I'll see you in the next one.